Grace and peace to you, dear brethren and friends. Welcome to another Bible study with Sister Karima Paris as we continue to look at the depravity of man. Today, this is our final uh, study on the depravity of man. And so, we invite you to get a copy of our book, Systematic Theology, on Amazon. You can just type in Nairon Medina and you would be able to get access to this book on Amazon. Remember, as usual, I will post the link below so that you can get it. We welcome you to our discussion and we pray by God's grace that you will have hope in knowing that you are not sin. Your nature is not sin. Before we go into it, let us pray, my dear friends. Gracious, holy, loving Father Yahweh, we come before thee now and we thank you so much for your love towards us in unfolding to our minds the reality of what it means for man to be depraved. We thank you for your great love in explaining these things to our minds that we can have hope knowing that this is how you view us and you have made it possible for us to change for us who have been depraved to receive newness of life and so as we go into your words we pray for your holy spirit to guide me into the understanding of the truth that I may teach the people the truth in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. So my dear friends, we start. We start by looking briefly at what we looked at last week by just reading the points for you as usual. This is what we would have seen last week as we did our study. We saw that when Adam sinned, his children received biological inheritances from him and also influenced inheritances. We also saw last week that sinful man has sinful flesh infected with sin. Sinful man has sinful flesh infected with sin. And we saw sinful flesh as our inheritance biologically is not sin. Because it is flesh affected by sin, not infected with sin. Jesus had our sinful flesh, yet he was without sin. All these wonderful things we would have seen last week. We also saw that sinful flesh itself is not sin. It is flesh that has infirmities we call it neutral infirmities and these infirmities are like hunger weariness thirst and a general weakened body constitution in intellectual strength and muscular strength what else did we see last week infirmities are also moral infirmities that is moral weaknesses or habits that are not practiced we also saw that sinful flesh is also flesh that has liabilities or perverted emotions flowing in it. And we are told that Jesus had human depravity in the fact that he had flesh depraved by sin, which is sinful flesh. But this is not sin. All those wonderful things you would have seen last week. And if you missed it last week, you can certainly go back and look at this the previous study now we want to continue my dear friends and we want to see talk about human nature you know many uh believe that human nature itself is sin but we saw that sinful flesh is not sin that is what we saw last week so we want to learn about human nature this week as we come to a close of our systematic theology with regards to the depravity of man, the second pillar. Human nature is made up of three things. Thoughts, emotions, and flesh. That is the three things that make up human nature. Hear that? Thoughts, emotions, 
and flesh. Now, to say the term sinful human nature is therefore to speak about the following. Thoughts infected with sin, emotions, desires, passions directed by sin, thus flesh affected with sin. Now we want to see a scripture for each of these things to show you what God is saying concerning sinful human nature. Let us see thoughts infected with sin and we go to Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5. Sinful human nature has thoughts infected with sin. Genesis 6 and verse 5 tells us this. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So here we see the Bible shows us that sinful human nature has thoughts infected with sin because we are told that their thoughts, the thoughts, the imagination of the thoughts of their heart was only evil continually. So it has a mind that is infected with sin. That is the carnal mind in them. And that is what sinful human nature means. You have a, a mind that is infected with sin because the thoughts are infected with sin. The Bible calls that the carnal mind. Let us look now at the emotions and to see that the emotions, desires, and passions are directed by sin. We are staying in the book of Genesis and we are looking at chapter 3 and verse 6. Pay careful attention as we read this together. We are told about Eve's experience. We are told. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat so what are we told here eve now in her mind sees that the forbidden fruit is good for food and as she reasoned it out in her mind how she could be god she saw it as something good and something pleasant for her to partake of and as a result of the thoughts of her heart concerning this forbidden fruit the emotions start flowing for it and we are told a treat to be desired so her desires are now for something that is forbidden and that is emotions desires passions directed by sin sinful thoughts direct her her pleasures and make her see something that God said is not good for food because it will cause you to die she now see it as something pleasant to partake of and now her desires flow as a result of the sinful thoughts in her mind what about a flesh that is infected with sin sinful human nature has flesh infected with sin. Let us see this in Romans chapter 7 and verse 18. So as a result of having thoughts infected with sin and emotions, desires, passions directed by sin, what results is flesh infected with sin. Romans chapter 7 and verse 18. It says here, for I know, Paul says, for I know that in me, that is in his thoughts and in his emotions, in him there dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. 
So Paul is showing this man of Romans 7 is an unconverted man. He says, in him dwelleth no good thing. He has thoughts infected with sin and emotions and desires and passions directed by sin. And so in him dwelleth no good thing. Because in him he has thoughts that are sinful and emotions that are directed by sin. Let us therefore see something else. Since, since there is thoughts infected with sin and emotions directed by sin which cause the flesh to be infected with sin what if there's thoughts that are not uh, infected with sin and emotions that are not directed with sin or by sin therefore no flesh that is infected with sin what would you call such a nature it is called sin-free human nature. Sin-free human nature is thoughts without sin, emotions not directed by sin, sinful flesh yet without sin. This is what the Bible shows us. The Bible shows us that man could have sin-free human nature. That is, his thoughts without sin, his emotions not directed by sin, and he had, has still his sinful human flesh yet without sin. Let us see some scriptures that tells us this fact. Remember, we are looking at what God says about the depravity of man, and he is now explaining to us about the human nature, which we see is thoughts, emotions, and flesh. And we now saw that you could have a sinful human nature, which is a, a nature or an experience where the thoughts are infected with sin, the emotions are directed by sin, and thus you have a flesh that is infected with sin. Now we are going to see sin-free human nature. Look with me at Psalm 119 and verse 11 to see that thoughts could be sin-free. The thoughts could be sin-free. This is what we are told in psalm 119 and verse 11 we are told here thy word have i hid in my heart that i might not sin against thee so david is showing us the science of maintaining sinfulness why i say of maintaining because you first have to be justified from the sin by god to have the spiritual mind and look at what david is saying to us thy word or the revealed truths that he received from god he have hide or stored it up in his mind so he will not sin so what does he have he have thoughts of truths of faith thoughts of revealed truths in his mind stored up to use so he wouldn't sin against god what else we are told we are told of psalm in psalm 37 psalm 37 about thoughts without sin that this man is upright this man who has the revealed truths of god directing him he is upright remember we saw in the beginning that of our study and the depravity of man that god made man upright which means he had the character of Christ in him, making him sin free. And now we are coming back to see that a man, though he have sinful human flesh, could be upright because he could have thoughts without sin. Let us see this in Psalm 37 and verse 31. Here what we are told. We are told here, the law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. Did you hear that? If you have a consciousness of the law of God, more so the spiritual law that keeps you from breaking the physical law. We looked at the spiritual law when we were looking at the Godhead. You could always go back to that. 
we see that the law of God is in his heart and what happens? None of his steps will slide. So it means that a man could have sin-free human nature by having thoughts without sin. He has the law of God in his heart directing his behavior. He has the faith of God in his heart, the word of God in his heart directing his thoughts and that will affect his emotions. So you have emotions not directed by sin, but emotions that are directed by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. Let us see Colossians chapter 2 and verse 18. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 11, sorry. This is what we are told. We are looking at emotions not directed by sin, but emotions that are directed by the faith of Jesus. Emotions that are directed by his law. This is what we are told. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. So he's circumcised in heart. The old man is crucified. And then we are told. In putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. So when Christ circumcised the heart, when Christ put to death the carnal mind, what happens? We are told that there is a putting off of the body of sins of the flesh or the emotions of sin that are directed by sin that is put off. Because now you have the mind circumcised and therefore it means truths are in the mind and so the emotions are not flowing based on the error or sin but it is flowing based on the truths in the mind. The law of God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. Let us look at Romans chapter 6 and verse 12 to also see this point that he has emotions not directed by sin so the sin free human nature has emotions not directed by sin and so this is what we are told here let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof what are we told let not sin reign in your day in your mortal body why because paul tells us that you are circumcised with christ you are circumcised which part of you are circumcised the foreskin of your heart so the carnal mind with the thoughts of the flesh with the thoughts of sin are removed and when it is removed the emotions of sins are inactivated that is what we are also told in um verse 6 of romans chapter 12 let us just read it to see how that once you have thoughts not uh infected with sin uh, the emotions of sin stop flowing and therefore you now have the ability by god having the faith in your mind to not allow uh, sin to reign in your mortal body offer you to have emotions of sin let us just read this one it says knowing this that our old man is crucified or the thoughts of sin the carnal mind is crucified with him christ that the body of sin might be destroyed or inactivated or katageo as the greek says or it ceases to flow that henceforth you should not serve sin you see that you would not serve sin if you have the thoughts without sin and if you have the emotions directed with the thoughts of faith and thus the man though he has sinful flesh he would be yet without sin because look sin sin free human nature is thoughts without sin it is emotions not directed by sin and therefore even though the man has sinful human flesh like christ he could be without sin first john chapter 3 
and verse 9. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 9. So there's no excuse. God is explaining to us what causes sin and we see the sinful human nature and now we are seeing the sin-free human nature. It all has to do with the thoughts. The thoughts triggers the emotions. When the emotions are triggered, you either sin or maintain sinfulness. Everything begins with the thoughts of the heart. Sin don't just boom come out of nowhere. No, it starts with the heart and the thoughts of the heart. When God circumcises the heart, he makes the heart free from sin. He removes the sin. He puts the sinful thoughts to death. That is what he does. And so let us look here in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 9. Sinful flesh he has, the human, the sinful human nature. He has sinful flesh, yet without sin. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 9. This is what we are told here. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. Now the seed is the word of God. The word of God in our consciousness causes us not to sin. So even though we have sinful human flesh, we could have thoughts that are based on the faith of Jesus Christ that will cause us not to sin. This is what we are told. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin for his seed or the truths of the character of Christ remaineth in him and he cannot sin. Let us look now at 1 John 5 and verse 18. 1 John 5 and verse 18 tells us this. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. You see that? If you are born of God, you are sinning not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. So the born of God experience is what causes a man to have a sin-free human nature. Thoughts not infected with sin, emotions not directed by sin, and he has the sinful human flesh yet without sin. This is what we have been seeing in our scriptures. Now, initially, no man is righteous inherently. So while we understand that we could have a sin-free human nature, we understand that no man, initially, no man is righteous inherently let us see this final scripture romans chapter 3 9 to 19 our final scripture as we come to a close of our bible study let us see this in romans chapter 3 initially no man is righteous inherently something has to happen to make him righteous this is what we are told here what then are we better than they no in no wise, for we have proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. You see that? So initially, no man is righteous. They are all under sin, no matter what race you are. We are told that we are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understand it. There is none that seek it after God. So if you're not seeking after God, you are in sin. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that do it good. No, not one. You see the sinfulness of man? Man is initially unrighteous. He does not have righteousness inherent in him because we would have seen that as a result of one man's sin that passed upon all men for all have sinned. And look what we are told here in verse 13. Their throat is an open sepulcher with their tongues. They have used deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift 
to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace? Have they not known the way of Christ? Christ is the king of peace, the prince of peace. And what else we are told? There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law said, it said to them who are under the law or condemned by the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Did you hear that? So what is outlined in Romans chapter 3 from verse 9 to, to 19 shows us that initially no man is righteous inherently. This is what we are told. But there is hope. There is hope for the man who is depraved. God in his great love towards us, he saw the depravity of man. He didn't wipe us out. But he provided a way to bring man to a state where he has sin-free human nature. That is the great love of God to us. His provision, his great provision to save us away from sin. And that will be the next pillar that we will be looking at. The provision that God has made. It is called providential grace and so i pray that you will continue with me on this journey as we look at our systematic theology as we consider our next step the providential grace of god to save man away from sin what he has provided for us our aid the merits of grace that he has provided for us to save the depraved man. And so we come to an end of our study and we want to see what beautiful things we would have seen today in our study. Let me just share with you what we would have seen. What have we seen? We saw in the points covered in today's study is that human nature is made up of the following. When you think about human nature, think about these things. Human nature has thoughts, emotions, and they have flesh. That is just what human nature is made up of. Human nature is not sin. You are not sin. Human nature is just made up of thoughts, emotions, and flesh. The term sinful human nature is therefore to speak about the following sinful human nature has thoughts infected with sin emotions desires and passions directed by sin and thus flesh infected with sin we saw that man could have sin free human nature that is thoughts without sin emotions not directed by sin he has his sinful flesh yet without sin these are the wonderful things that we would have seen and note that initially no man is righteous inherently he needs to be made righteous so let us pray gracious father thank you so much for helping us to see and understand these important truths. Because these important truths give man hope. This is our hope, that we in ourselves are not sin. When you created man with human nature, you did not create man in sin or with sin. But as a result of the fall of man, we have developed what is known as sinful human nature that is thoughts infected with sin emotions that are directed by sin and we have uh, flesh flesh infected with sin this is what you have shown us but there is hope for the sinner the sinner though he would have had sinful human nature 
could have a sin-free human nature, which is thoughts not directed by sin, but thoughts that are directed by the faith of Jesus Christ, by the spiritual law of God, the law of God himself, or the divine nature himself. And once we have thoughts that are directed or thoughts that are infected with the truth, there would be no emotions of sin flowing in our members. We would have sin-free experiences, experience of the mind and experience of the passions, though we have sinful human flesh. Thank you for revealing these things for, to us because there's hope that we could overcome sin in this present world through your merits that you give unto us. Thank you for this and may the viewers understand these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen.